Welcome to Puget Sound, an area synonymous with great fishing. In this episode, Lee Horsley, along with Seattle radio personality and fireman Tom Nelson, endures the temperamental weather of the Pacific Northwest to try and bring in a keeper ling cod. Tom gives Lee some tips to fishing his home waters, as well as preparing this delicious fish, right here on Western Sport Fishing with Lee Horsley. Oh, that's a good one. Oh, get him out of his hole, Lee. Stick him, Lee. Congratulations. Thank, Thank you, sir. so much. This ain't no trout pond. <laughs> Look at that. What a day. The Great Northwest is home to some of the best fisheries on the West Coast. The Puget Sound is considered an endland sea by many locals, and Seattle is the hub of the Puget. With a major port, a world-renowned fish market, and many prime tourist destinations, Seattle is the center of the Pacific Northwest. Ships come into port in a steady stream, bringing both people and fish to the market. Lee sets out at dawn with radio host, fireman, and guide, Tom Nelson. It is a typical cold and dreary Northwest day on the Sound as they take to the water in search of Ling Cod. The reports of possible storms and fast currents are not enough to keep them off the boat, and they head out to start off by catching their bait for the day's trip, Sand Dab. Tom explains to Lee where they are going for sand dabs and how they plan to use them to bring in the link. Sand dabs, yeah, sand dabs, exactly. Yeah, and uh, sand dabs are pretty tasty. They are. Yeah. Think about smart to them. Yeah. Do they like a sandy bottom? Yep, exactly. Yeah. If you look, if you look at the chart plotter, you can see here's Hat Island right here. Mm -hmm. And then of course the depth lines are, are spread out quite a ways mm -hmm. when they're spaced far apart. We, we've got a nice flat there, and then that's yeah. what we're looking at. And so you see, we got lines close together right here. It's a steep drop off. So I I, right here's a nice big flat. For lings, you're just you're looking at just the opposite. Yeah. You're looking for you're looking for structure. You're looking for rock, pinna rocky. Exactly. Ledges, kind exactly. of. Exactly. You're looking thing, you're yeah. looking for pinnacles. Yeah. So with any luck at all, but if you want to find sand dabs, you like the flats. Right. Okay. Now, okay. so so then any any sand dab that finds his way into some rocky structure is, is gonna find himself in the mouth of a ling cod, yeah, yeah. right? So so we're gonna help this process along a little bit by grabbing these sand dabs. Well, that's and cool. them over some rocky stuff. That's great. All right, buddy. Okay, Lee, get you set up. I knew he was down there. Tom fishing for our bait is, is fun. Hope I didn't one lose him. One, there one he one. is. That's the one we want, right that's there. That's the guy, huh? That's that's one of them. That's your sand dab. That's yeah. That is the uh, arrowtooth flounder. He's kind of Puget Sound's cousin to the halibut, uh -huh. right? Yeah. And um, link cod eat these things like popcorn. I'll be darned. Now, what is there a particular kind of rig that you use? What do you call this rig here? Basically, that's anything? just a crescent sinker, four ounce crescent sinker. Yeah. Oh, well, this is great. I'm loving every minute of it. So our challenge today, with regard to this weather is locating these rock piles, which are in pretty well-defined areas on the bottom, uh -huh. and then holding the boat on top so we can present our gear, drop it right down. So, I see. So that's that's going to be our issue today, is, is staying on top of those rock piles. Well, I've, I've rock fished before, oh, okay. but but not uh, not the kind of lengths that you have up here. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Finally, I mean, let me make a All little right, down on double hookup, yeah. double hookup. Yeah. Double header on arrow two. Yeah. yeah. Woohoo! Oh, man, he ate it. They, they're, they ain't much, there's not much doubt with this Berkeley stuff. It's yeah. uh, the gulp is like the real deal. Oh, there we go. There we go. Get the shark hook. Ah, right. Yeah. Get yeah. the harpoon. Uh oh. Now, now we're fishing for big lings. You keep catching big ones like this. But yeah. You let them eat it. You feel them, and you're lowering the rod tip right. and kind of leaning just, into them. Yeah, just make right? sure. Yeah, let okay. them have it, let them have it, and then reel into the bite. Okay. 
That is the perfect size right there. That's, nice. That's Nicely done. And you, and you hooked them in the lips. Yeah, this See? time. I didn't That's let them uh, munch it too much. Very nice. Can't hardly get a stick in the water with you wrapping on these poor little flounder here. Let's make one more run up the line here. Make sure we're full of bait. Okay. Unless you got another fish on there. No, listen, I'm having a ball. That's great. <laughs> Let's go get them. Fishing alongside whales is a common occurrence here, but they never cease to intrigue and amuse even the most hardened local. begin to kick up as Tom and Lee look for structures that are the habitat of the ling. All right, Lee, so you can see that what we got here is we were running out and the shelf dropped off and yeah. boom, came right back up again. So we got this we got this right. rock pile here, which... That's is, great. Well, That's what we're looking for, That's right? What, exactly. Yeah. It's not native habitat to those sand yeah. dabs, uh -huh. right? So when we run one of these sand dabs over this thing... Oh boy, oh yeah, boy, lunch. Exactly, yeah, exactly. exactly. So, and what are the what you were saying something about the little stripes there? That yeah, exactly. When when it's a harder bottom, you'll see that uh, you get a deeper bottom line or a deeper mark. I I, I guess. And, and so when it's when it's shallow, you don't. Or when it's soft, muddy bottom, you don't tend to get that as right. much. So Tom, what what the, what kind of rig are we uh, using now? It's very very similar to a salmon mooching rig and and what we're using for the bait lead. Uh huh. And basically we've got 50 pound leader because the lings are so toothy. Yeah. And then we reach in here and grab a volunteer. And none of them really want to volunteer. Yeah, right off I was the bat, just gonna say, not so fast, not Johnson. so fast, right? Yeah. And so we get in here and we just take that top one right through his head like that. Yeah. And there you go. All right. And send it down, brother. Okay. Go ahead. So what do you think, Tom? Is this uh, speed we're traveling? Is this make it harder to fish these waters? That's, that's an excellent point because we're trying to locate and work these rock piles. And boat control is an absolute premium at, at that time. So if we're moving, we're essentially trolling over the top. We can't spend a lot of time on top of that structure. And we see our lines going out at an angle. That's because the boat's moving relative to our gear and relative to our target water. So it's a challenge, definitely a challenge. You, you want to be able to make these live baits swim around yeah. that structure where those lings are living. Yeah. Feels good to get that salt air in the yeah. doesn't yeah. it? Well, it certainly is gorgeous here. This is wonderful to have in your backyard. Oh, it is. What a great way to grow up, too. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, we're so blessed to have this, this inland sea, you know, essentially with all the benefits of salt water and shrimp yeah. and crab and all the natural resources that go along with it, you know. You know there's, I, there's even lingcod. Yeah. I, I hear <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. That's him. Oh, shoot. Oh, you yeah. ah. so quick on the switch, huh? <laughs> That's all right, buddy. We we'll get you rebated. I tried, boss. Yeah. I tried. <laughs> you tried to tell me, but yeah. I just couldn't. I know wait. it. I'm having and then reel into the bite. Reel into the bite. Okay. You gotta let him eat it, partner. Yeah. That's life. Puncture, grab by the head. I thought he was laying on it big time, but. Yeah. That's him. <laughs> Next volunteer from the studio audience. Oh yeah, a lively little guy right there. He looks like he'd fit in a ling's mouth pretty good. He is all fired up about swimming into the mouth of a ling. I can tell by the look on his face. That's really getting nice out here. How long have you been doing this, Tom? The, the joke in the family is they kept me off the water till I was five weeks old. Yeah. And I mean, there's there's pictures of you know me just you know wrapped up in swaddling clothes and lying on a in a boat hall. Yeah. You know? yeah. <laughs> you know, like you said, this is wonderful to have in your backyard. But... It really is, and and you know it's just Puget Sound is among the top nationwide in, in boat ownership per capita. Right. You know. Yeah. You know, my wife hasn't quite bought that argument yet about <laughs> you know the I we see. need four boats, but. Uh, She's, she's coming around slowly yeah. but surely. Fishing's a little more than a touristy thing. I mean, it's a, it's a way of life to, to a lot of folks around here. I mean, you just gotta fight these conditions a little bit. And we'll find them, we'll find them. 
you know, we're, we're blessed to have, you know, the shrimp and crab and all the, everything around here. There's, I even hear tell there might be a lingcod or two, but we'll, <laughs> we'll find out here. We're tempting them. You know it. Yeah, we're tempting That, that darkness extending from the clouds to the Puget Sound is most assuredly uh, liquid sunshine it's right coming, there. It's coming in, huh? It I could be wrong. I could be mistaken. Let's pick him up and let me get on top of it. Wait a second. Hold it, hold it, hold it. Oh, you got him. Yeah! Good job, buddy. Come on top of him here. Yeah! Time! Oh, you got the right kind. <laughs> this is great. Back in See, they're a lot stronger than those flounder. Huh? They are strong. You know what? They are strong. They're strong on the table, too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I understand that uh, you've got a little recipe that we might uh, um, but, but utilize. But you can't, it's bad luck to talk about recipes while the oh, fish is still right. in the water. <laughs> These guys fight. Yeah, they do. They are fighters. They're strong, they, aren't they? They are strong. Look at him. How do you, how do you want me to do just this? Pull, just hold, him, hold the pole straight up there, okay. buddy. Okay. Pull him over to your side of the boat there, buddy. Okay. There he is right there. You back. All right. Look at the size of that! Look at the size of that! That's the one. Give you a little bit. Well, we had the fish for him, huh? Absolutely. Here we go. Huh? Look at that. That is a link cod, buddy. Nice effort. Thank you. Good job. That is my Hi. first Puget Sound link cod. He is a dandy. Now we can talk about wing recipes. Okay, <laughs> all right, now we can do it. And they are phenomenal eating. See what I mean about that mouthful of teeth? Oh, yeah. That's the last thing that a lot of flounders see right there. Exactly. <laughs> nice fish. <laughs> nice fish. <laughs> That's fantastic. We had to fish for him, huh? Yeah. Look at that, huh? Get out of this weather. Not, not blowing as much here as it was out there. Is no, it? I tell you what. Yeah. Little bumpy out there today, but that's the way it goes sometimes. It's really we... beautiful here. Yeah. What a nice ride. Isn't it though? What a nice ride. Oh, what do we got in here, Tom? Well, was, you know, the, uh, today's uh, your link cod here. God, what a gorgeous fish. Oh man, I tell you what. That's beautiful. They are beautiful. Even more beautiful on the table. They're gonna uh, make us pretty nice dinner tonight, right? Hot San Juan at yeah, the beach house. Absolutely. That, partner. Now, what do you do with the, our bait that we caught? Well, it was, this is a catch and release fishery. I see. So we can go ahead and release these guys and, and let them go, and uh, yeah. that'll that'll be that. So do you ever uh, fix sand dabs? You, do you spend a lot of time filleting and not much yeah. time eating? Right, exactly, <laughs> yeah. Well, they were fun to catch. Oh, they are fun to catch. Yeah. And the thing of it is, the ones you don't, the ones you don't use? Yeah. <laughs> Seal bait, right? Yeah. There we go. Are you going to show me the best way to do this? Yeah, here? you know, if yeah. it's a salmon or, or most of the bony fish, yeah. you know, we'd, we'd come at it from the gut cavity, but, right. you know, we, we can do this without opening them up. And the way we do is we just feel for the uh, back of the of the gill plate, okay, right. which is the bony structure okay. right there. Yeah. And we can also feel the rib bones, Lee. Yeah. And so what we'll do is we'll just go ahead and get right behind that bone there. Okay. Take him right on, right to his backbone on I this see. side. Okay. Cool. See, that, see how yeah. nice and thick that fillet is? Yeah, I got you. you go right along the elongated dorsal fin. Mm -hmm. And, we're, and of course, the reason we use flexible knives, these fillet knives, these frost fillet knives, are you know they're very sharp. But we can also feel how close we are to those right. bones. See how close yeah. we are? Now you see we're getting her, yeah. getting her peeled off there quite nicely. Yeah. And just a few more repeated knife strokes. Yeah. We're getting to the rib portion, so we're just going to go right around those ribs, just like that. We get the other half of this fillet. That's amazing. There's a lot of meat on that. There's a lot of fish. meat. There's a lot of meat. There we go. 
swift. That is gorgeous. And that is a wing cod fillet, my friend. Yeah, beauty. And they're pretty now, but they're even better on the well, table. Yeah, I'm, well, I'm not going to have you give away your recipe just yet. We'll okay, that. well, we can, we'll we can do, do that do, later on. We, we, can, we can do that. We can do that a little yeah. later. If you wouldn't mind, open up one of those well, for I me. We'll do that. I say that. See, it's not, a, not an easy job being the and bag now, man, is I'll it? I'll tell you what. Yeah. Then you just set that right there. Under there yeah. for now, zip it up. And, and we do a reverse process on the other side. Just feeling for the edge of that gill plate there. Yeah. So we know where to go the first cut and get it right down in there, poke the skin. And they are beautiful fish. Oh, yeah. They're very, very that colorful. Color. Now, do they, do they vary in color at different Somewhat. times of the year? And, and with age as well. Yeah. I, I would expect right. that it, in, in a place called like San Juan Islands or such, yeah. that you would see a wider variety of age classes. Uh -huh. And the younger ones and older ones definitely have a look about them. Oh, really? They're, they're yeah. very individualistic, yeah. And that's that's where we're going to go tomorrow? That's where we're going tomorrow. Excellent. We're going to go hit the islands for some. The islands. Hit the islands. You know, I've never been. I'm really looking oh, forward to oh, it. Oh, you're, you're in for a treat, my friend. Yeah. It's a wonderful, wonderful place. And just stroke that fillet right off of them. Yep, fresh ling cod, my friend. One of the Northwest's real treats. Yeah. Comes right off of there like it wants to. Yeah, absolutely. Not leaving so, a lot of meat on that, that carcass. Yeah. Now, you had mentioned before uh, when you uh, put your crab pots out? Oh, yes. What time of year is that? <laughs> that starts, that will start in, in June or in July. June and July. Yeah, and we wouldn't be letting this go if that was the case. Because you would save that for, we'd definitely for your be crab saving, pots? You know yeah. it. Yeah, so a fresh, a fresh carcass like this will bring the Dungeness a call one. Yeah. So there we go. What a beauty. That's it. Okay, adios. Well, what was wonderful is that I got my limit today. And we get to eat your limit. Today. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, absolutely. Perfect. Excellent. All righty. Get her on the trailer and go have a meal. Sounds good. I'm surprised that there's not more boats. Well, yeah. it was rough out today. You yeah, gotta, yeah, you gotta well, stay in the craft and get out yeah. there where you're gonna get beat up. Well, it was a good day. Thanks again. Well, you but bet. I appreciate it. Was great. Yeah, I appreciate it. You know, we had a tough time out there in the boat today, but fortunately we had Nick Kester here from All Star Charters. You know, thanks so much for your help today. We appreciate it. We saw all kinds of weather. We saw, the, you know, the bumps, the rain, the sun came out. I got a chance to catch this beautiful fish right there at the last when that squall came up and everything else. It was really cool. And now we're going to get to fix my fish. Well, why don't you give me an idea of uh, how, what, what the first step is here? Okay. What do you basically... The first step that I usually do is I'll take this thing, flip it over, uh -huh. and pre-cut a little notch in it right here yeah and then pretty much just right off this little tiny bit mm -hmm. right there the reason i put that notch in there is to stick my finger in it the meat's pretty tough oh so you can hold the skin then i can hold the skin in oh, place i got you and then you're pulling the skin along with the thing right instead of trying to just push a knife through it right that's the best way to go about it yeah so we're going to go ahead and put it on foil but and we don't want it to stick to the foil so the cheat is you take just a couple pats of butter Oh, that's a shame. And sneak. Yeah. Just sneak. Just a little sneaky. Sneak. A little sneaky butter. Okay. Sneaky okay. butter under there. Underneath. And that's uh -huh. that's going to keep it from sticking to the foil and also right. just some moisture to get it started off. One layer of salt. Yep. One layer of pepper. Oh, yeah. All right. Sesame oil. Okay. Yeah. Just. So it looks like what? You're about like, a cap? Cap yeah. full, maybe? I mean, you got to take it real easy on okay. the sesame oil or you will pay. Wow. A couple of drips of sesame oil. Okay. Okay. And a very judicious use of soy as well. Okay, and that's just a regular soy regular sauce? Regular soy sauce. Okay. okay. You betcha. Right. Juice of a lemon. Okay. This right. is a um, Parmesan garlic cheese mixture and finish out our seasoning. Okay. And that's it. So now we can take this and um, head out to the grill and get oh, this and get great. this method going. So take Nick's, Nick, Nick's going to take that out and put it on. Excellent. Thanks. Boy, you can't watch. Oh, I'm gonna... yeah. <laughs> Boy, what a great evening for this, huh? Great. So what we're going to do here is we're going to go ahead and sit this on the grill. Yeah. Got it. Simple as it gets right there. Right on the foil. Well, the grill's running about 400 degrees temp, yeah. as you can see here on the meter. Right. Um, the one thing you don't want to do 
is overcook it. Right. I mean, a roundabout guess, I know. 15 to 20 minutes. Really? Just keep an eye on it. It doesn't take that long. This is called Love Loaf. Okay. Just your standard French loaf and then the Love Loaf mixture. Absolutely. So there we go. We're going to get one loaf to kind of support each other in the oven. We got green onions. Green onions. We got a, a full bulb of garlic. Okay. And Romano. Yeah, sure. Which is going to kind of mellow out. We got sharp cheddar in here. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. And um, of course, the secret ingredient, which is, of course, love. Right. Yeah. And that, my friend, is Love Loaf ready, ready to chase that, uh, that ling in the oven. Okay, so that ready? That goes in, yeah. You betcha. Let's do it. I'll get the door for you. Thank you. This is top shelf material. Top here. shelf. Okay. Top shelf material. Right. right there. There we go. Excellent. We're good to go. So now, yep. actually, a guy could have a little uh, bracer and relax yeah, for a minute, and then we'll we'll do some grill stuff. And... I don't think I know how to barbecue without a cigar and a beer. Yeah. So, okay. so you kind of need those two key. Elements. Okay. Well, you know. Okay. Twist yeah. my arm. All right. Okay. <laughs> All right. We got it. All right. Fair let's enough. go. Let's do it. It smells phenomenal. Good. Oh, this looks great. Who's kicking up out there yet? Yeah. That is phenomenal, guys. How are you doing that sandwich? Oh, baby. I mean, this is just truly, truly a treat. You know, that's wonderful. Thank you for joining us on this raucous ride on Puget Sound, bringing in Keeper Cod. The West Coast thrives with species of every variety, from Alaska to Southern California. We hope you join us next time as Lee makes his way up and down the coast, right here on the Outdoor Channel's Western Sport Fishing. Jesse, you've been very good. Now you're gonna get some of this fish skin, okay? What do you think, pal? There you go. You're such a good dog, yes. What a great place to live for a dog, yes. <laughs>